All the recent complaints I've seen from people here on the Hub Discord about NVIDIA GPU experiences have been about issues while using multi-monitor setups. And why is that an issue with NVIDIA but not with AMD? So this is an interesting one. Um, you'll probably have a bit more to say about this sure. than me, uh, at least as to the why. This is something I can personally confirm as being an issue. I talked about it years ago uh, with my editing rig. I have three 4K 144 hertz panels, 32 inch MSI models. Uh, and I originally had an, I think it was the RTX 3090 I started with. Wouldn't wake up from sleep. I had to unplug, reconnect cables or turn off the monitor, turn it back on. Or sometimes that didn't work. The cable trick worked or vice versa. It was a real pain in the backside. And that was pretty much every single time I had to wake up the monitors when I came into the office in the morning. Just, you know, one would wake up or none would wake up or two or whatever. It was just a bit of a mess. Put in the 600 XT, never have that problem ever. They just always wake up every single time. Uh, so I, I struggled with the GeForce GP for quite a few months, hoping driver updates or something would fix it. I did hear at one point that it was solved, but I've never gone back to confirm that because once you get a, a professional PC working that's used for professional use, you don't usually like to mess with it too much. So the 600 XT has been flawless for me in that regard. And I also use it uh, with Adobe Premiere and stuff. I know you use an NVIDIA GPU with that. Um, people often ask why I'm using a 600 XT with Premiere, but it works just works fine. fine. We, works we fine. have GH6 uh, cameras, or at least I do on my end, 5.7K footage, and it plays back really well. Uh, the, the GeForce GPUs will certainly know better in that regard. So the problem... At, at least for me, definitely existed. It's not people making this up. And I've seen countless users complain about, uh, I think in particular, triple monitors, but I think it even would happen with dual monitors, yep. right? With yep. GeForce GPUs not waking them up. And as someone that uses graphics cards for testing monitors and doing a lot of that, you probably have a bit more insight perhaps. Yeah, I, I think the issue with multiple monitors and you know, it comes down to there's all sorts of other technologies that can impact this things like dsc is something that's or display stream compression is something that's talked about a lot in terms of weird gpu behavior and causing problems um you know it come, really just comes down to the display engine on the gpu and often you know there's multiple states power states and clock states that the display engine can run at you know, often people complain about things like idle power with multiple monitors being very high on some GPUs, other GPUs being very low. That all just depends on how much pixel throughput the GPU can do at different states. And so as the display engine works, and typically once you start adding more displays in, particularly 4K high refresh displays, the display engine needs to start clocking higher and higher, using more power, using more capabilities to just simply push through all the pixels. Mm -hmm. So typically people with single monitor setups, it can clock down nice and low. It's going to be not particularly highly utilized. But then with, again, multi-monitor setups and having to do all these connections and things, it starts to have to utilize it more. And like with anything, the more you utilize something, the more likely you are to run into various bottlenecks. Of course, it shouldn't be an issue because 4K, multiple 4K displays is supported mm -hmm. on these products. But yeah, I, I agree with your general thoughts on NVIDIA being a bit less stable at the moment for multiple GPUs. And there's a few other things that I've seen um, testing monitors. As I've said a few times, my main display testing rig uses an AMD GPU specifically because it handles display outputs better than NVIDIA. NVIDIA DSC GPUs have had, I've had a few issues with them over the years. Things like the Remember the original Samsung Odyssey monitor, it was like 5120 by 1440, 240 hertz or something. So very high resolution, high refresh rate. Again, you needed pretty good quality cables. You know, there was some issues with multiple monitors with that setup. It would, you know, start down resing and down, putting down the resolution and using chroma subsampling, all sorts of weird things when you had multiples of those set up. And yeah, and I just found at the time that like you, that AMD GPUs seem to, handle those things a bit better, just working a bit better out of the box. AMD GPUs definitely will almost always run at the maximum refresh rate and resolution by default, which is something that NVIDIA GPUs often don't do. So when you, as, and by that I mean, when you plug in the monitor for the first time, so let's say it's 4K, 144 Hertz, Often you'll see an NVIDIA GPU run it at 60 hertz, whereas the AMD GPU will run at 144 hertz. I, now, noticed... why why it would set to 60 hertz by default on NVIDIA? I've got no idea. Well, <laughs> I was about to say because I, I have I've noticed that myself, and I often wonder. I wonder if that's an actual source of concern or a problem for AMD. The, generally, the reason why you'll default same thing with memory, for example, mm -hmm. to a base standard is for compatibility. 
Mm-hmm. So then, you know, if there's a problem with the cable, and again, when I had my problem with my monitors, I changed cables, tried all those troubleshooting things. So if someone has a crap quality cable, they'll at least get a picture. Yeah. Whereas with AMD, you'll start, maybe you'll get the flickering black screen issue or other yeah, real problems. Um, However, I will pre- preface this by saying that the monitor in its display information will give a recommended refresh rate and resolution. Mm-hmm. So it will say like the the recommended for this product is 1440p, 240hz, because some monitors can then do 4K, 120hz downscaling or stuff. You don't want to prefer that. You want to prefer the native mm-hmm. pipeline. And yeah, I would say it's probably on the GPU manufacturers to make sure that they're doing that properly. Yeah, I definitely... And making sure they can actually support 1440p, 240hz. Sure. Yeah, properly. I definitely prefer the um, AMD approach because... Again, as I've said before in Q&As, I swear people who say there's no difference between 60 hertz and 144 hertz mm-hmm. are actually just at 60 hertz and haven't enabled yeah, 144 they, they ex- yet. Yeah, because they expect it to be so, plug and play and work. That's with, right. So the I would not be... I mean, that's the only plausible explanation as far mm-hmm. as I'm concerned because 144 hertz and and uh, 60 hertz a day and night for using the cursor in Windows, let alone gaming. So... Yep. Anyway, getting a bit off topic there, but yeah, I definitely prefer AMD's approach. So I just wonder if, uh, yeah, a, uh, Nvidia's approach is a bit more foolproof. Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to yeah, not running at the maximum re- refresh rate, that's probably a foolproof thing. I think with the other side of things, as you say, the, the issues that they have with multiple monitor and things, you know, it's something they need to work on. But you know, over time, we've seen the opposite side of things on AMD GPUs where, yeah, multiple monitors may work, but then people complain that the GPU is clocked super high for no reason mm-hmm. on multiple monitors. You know, the, the 5000 series, like 5700 XD, had lots of issues with people connecting monitors and black screens and all sorts of things going on there. So like with a lot of these driver things, there tends to be ebbs and flows between which company approaches these things better. I think AMD probably looked at the 5700 XT issues and went, we need to look into that. Let's let's really make that robust and fix mm-hmm. it up. Whereas NVIDIA feels like things like DSC have sort of been patched in over time and maybe there needs to be a bit of an, an overhaul into how those things are, are work on their products. Mm-hmm. But again, it really can depend on individual use cases and things like that as to whether you have problems. So yeah.